Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson at Excel, International A Level as well as GCE, Biology Practicals. I'm beginning with Co-op Practical 10. Here we study the effects of light intensity, light wavelength, temperature, and availability of carbon dioxide on the rate of photosynthesis using a suitable aquatic plant. I have separated this practical into four different videos, one studying light intensity, another studying light wavelength, another studying temperature, and the last one studying carbon dioxide concentration. So let's begin with the first experiment. In the first experiment, I'm investigating the effects of changing light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis of an aquatic plant. A suitable aquatic plant is maybe a Canadian pondweed plant. The setup for the experiment is as you can see here, and because we have to control the light intensity, this side of the experiment is covered with an aluminum foil in order for a light source to come from only one direction. We will then cut the Canadian pondweed plant. In some experiments, they cut it underwater in order to prevent bubbles from forming at this position here. This position here, you do not want bubbles of gas to be trapped there. However, in this description, I have talked about the idea of cutting it and then rubbing it with your fingers in order to prevent or remove any bubbles that could have formed. So our suitable light source is going to come from this direction to ensure that we control the amount of light that the plant is exposed to. And since this experiment is about varying light intensity, we could position the light source at different distances from the experimental setup. Maybe you could begin with a position of about maybe 10 centimeters, and then you go to 15, you go to 20, and so on, so that the light intensity is decreasing as the experiment is carried out. Sometimes you could begin with a far distance and then move the light source closer, so it depends on what you want to do. So my procedure is as below. You need to place a piece of pondweed, approximately 10 centimeters long in a large beaker of water. So you need to remove bubbles gently by running a finger and a thumb over the surface of the pondweed and the water. Then you cover one side of the beaker with aluminum foil so that the light can only enter the beaker from one side. As you can see, light should only come from this direction. So we will block this side with aluminum foil in order to prevent light coming into the beaker from this direction. Then we add half a spatula of sodium hydrogen carbonate to the water and leave for five minutes. The sodium hydrogen carbonate is there to act as a source of carbon dioxide because, you know, in photosynthesis, plants need carbon dioxide, they need water, they need a light source, and the correct temperature for photosynthesis to be carried out. So sodium hydrogen carbonate is used to provide carbon dioxide for the aquatic plant. You need to position the bench lamp 10 centimeters from the beaker and allow the pondweed to adjust for about five minutes. You need to allow it to adjust to the temperature and the conditions within the water, as well as the light source for about five minutes before you can measure the experimental results. Fill the capillary tubing of the photosynthometer with water. Place the funnel end of the tubing in the beaker of water and position the pondweed with the cut end at the top of the funnel opening. This is what we're talking about here. The cut end has to face the funnel so that any bubbles of gas produced can go into the capillary tubing in order to be collected using the syringe. Attach a paper clip at the opposite end of the poundweed to position its weight correctly. As bubbles of oxygen begin to form and pass through the capillary tubing, you need to start a stop clock and use a syringe to collect the oxygen produced in the capillary tubing within a specific time. So the experiment has to be carried out within a specific time that is going to be consistent for all experiments studied. You need to have carried out preliminary experiments in order to state the appropriate time for which you will carry out this experiment. So you have to record the volume of gas produced within that specific period of time. And then you will use the syringe to refill the capillary tubing and then begin to record again. You can see this is the capillary tubing that will be filled with water in the beginning. But as bubbles of oxygen gas are formed, they are going to travel in here and there is going to be some displacement. Some water is going to be displaced as gas comes in. So in the end, we will use a syringe to refill the capillary tubing and then begin to record again. So using the same pondweed apparatus, you will need to repeat the experiment with the lamp positioned at different distances from the beaker. Remember, varying the position of the lamp is the same as varying light intensity because if you bring it closer to the experimental setup, it means there is high light intensity, and if you move it far away, the light intensity is decreasing. 
So the higher the light intensity, the higher the rate of oxygen being produced, and therefore the higher the rate of a reaction. That should be your expected result. So take repeat experiment at each distance and calculate the mean volume of gas produced. And if you are asked to plot a graph, plot a graph of volume of gas produced on the vertical axis, because this is the dependent variable, and the distance of the lamp from the experiment on the x-axis, because this is the independent variable. In this experiment, you need to control the temperature. You can control using a water bath so that the pondweed is exposed to the same temperature throughout all the light intensity variations that will be carried out. You also need to control the carbon dioxide concentration used. We do this by using the same mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate for all the experiments when we vary the light intensity in order to make sure that they are exposed to the same carbon dioxide concentration. And we also need to control the wavelength. We can do this by using the same color filter. It means for all experiments, you will put a color filter in between the light source and the experimental setup so that the point width is exposed to the same wavelength throughout the experiment and for all variations of light intensity. So we expect the volume of gas produced to increase with increase in light intensity until another factor limits the rate of photosynthesis. So this brings us to the end of this first experiment. In the next video, we'll be talking about changing wavelengths and how that affects the rate of photosynthesis.